Ubuntu's latest distro release. Oh, yeah. Is it worthy of being called the great mythological man bear pig? The what? Minotaur. Okay, hold on a second, minotaur. Brian. I, well, I, I appreciate the reference of South Park. Yeah. That's not what a minotaur is. That's <laughs> not. A, it's not. No. Oh, what, what is yeah. a minotaur? Oh, it's a half bull, half man. Isn't that like same thing? Man, bear, pig? Half it's, bull, it's, half man? Well, I mean, there's the bear and the pig part that's different. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> well, in that case, welcome to episode number 343 of Destination Linux, your favorite video podcast. My name is Ryan. I'm Jill. And I'm Michael. Also, in this episode, we're going to discuss, is Linux really secure? There's an article that's been sent to us that says, Linux being secure is actually a misconception. Dun, 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 dun. Mm. Dun, dun. <laughs> now let's get this show on the road towards Destination Linux. This week, our community feedback comes from a very special listener out there, Jacob. Okay. Okay. Yay. Jacob has something very important that he wants to say and share. And I hope all of you take a moment, like if you're driving, pull over to the side, you know, take a moment to really embrace the words that Jacob's going to use here because this is important. This could I feel change. like you're leading it up pretty big. <laughs> so it has to be something for you in some way. Yeah. Why would you ever just I, let it, me get to the content? I just Michael. feel like you're, you're, you're building it up so much. It has to Listen. be. <laughs> Jacob's an awesome person, and he deserves the respect of everybody listening to the words he's about to drop onto people's brains. He's about to grow people's brains with this wisdom here. Okay. Jacob says, best show around. You agree with that, uh, Michael? I agree with that, yes. Best show around with an exclamation mark, nonetheless. I agree. And then he goes on to say, y'all need to listen to Ryan. He a man. <laughs> I just love that. And that is the end <laughs> Of That's the, email. the end of the email. Yes. <laughs> so I think everybody needed to hear that, you know, and I want to thank Jacob. I agree with his assessment, number one, all the way around. Uh, of course you do. <laughs> Jacob is clearly big brained and has both great taste class and has never found himself chewing the end of a pen, <laughs> let's say, like so many other people out there. Yes, Those barbarians. Yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Jacob. <laughs> Did for you your seriously... Pick yes. a one sentence email that is praising you as the feedback for the show. You could send us paragraphs of information and say nothing in those paragraphs. Jacob is so smart, so intellectual. He was able to take all of his thoughts and wrap them up into two sentences, two perfect sentences, I think. I mean, that's hard to argue with the first one. It's really easy to argue with the second one. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I don't. I don't think so. You know, you're kind of whining about this, Michael. I, I feel like I don't you're know whining what you're talking. About about. I'm not whining. I'm just pointing out the flaws in your choices. <laughs> the community feedback is a very important part of the show. And Jacob had something very important to say that we need to share. But I also, because I'm sure you're, there's going to be another Chen, uh, pen chewer out there that's going to complain about this. I also put some additional community feedback. We're actually going to get into detail oh, okay. later in the show. That's the security part that I teased about earlier. So there'll be some more community feedback, but this one deserves the front of the show, the very beginning. The Jacob, yeah. thank you so much for sending in feedback. We appreciate that. Even if it is letting Ryan pat himself on the back. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob. And Jacob, that, you know, it's so true on both fronts. Thank you for your kind words about Destination Linux. And Ryan is demand for sure. He is kind, there you go. compassionate, knowledgeable, and passionate about linux and very buff too <laughs> jill what are you talking about buff Those i love are noodle jill. arms i love jill so much you know he jill's my f <laughs> jill is the perfect person you know Aww. michael on the other hand you need to try to be more like jill jill is michael. my spirit animal yeah oh Jill's all of our spirit animals you're both my spirit animals <laughs> <laughs> well thank you jacob for sending in the awesome email and we have some more community feedback later on, but it's very nice to every once in a while, get a nice email like that coming in. Just make sure they're about Jill and me only. Thank you. <laughs> and me. There's, there's three of us on the show, Ryan. If you want to throw Michael in there, you guess you can't, but you know, Jill and, Jill and Ryan. You know, some people collect Pokemon cards, uh, others mm -hmm. collect baseball cards. Sure. 
I even, and I've never told people this before, have a little bit of a collection of UFC trading cards. Mm, nice. You know, I didn't even know those existed. Yeah, they're out there. And collections are vast as people's interests. You can collect things for nearly every hobby out there. However, Michael on this show has the strangest hobby of all. I have many hobbies and many collections. No, what are you talking about? This one's very weird. You collect domain names. You collect domain names like nobody I've ever seen in my life. That's like, just ridiculous. That's it's true. That's ridiculous. I only have about 70. What's 100, 70, 100, like my kids would say. They're <laughs> like, I want 70, 100 of this because that's what it's not just 70. Like Pokemon, Michael has to collect them all. Literally, and, and I mean this, any discussion we have with Michael about a new business thing always ends with, we should buy a domain for that. That's Michael's like input of let's buy a domain for that. He wants the dot com, the dot net, the dot biz, the dot community. He wants them all. He wants to collect them all because like they're going out of style. And okay, that's a bit excessive. I, I do have a lot of domains and those conversations have happened, but dot biz, really? <laughs> <laughs> that's the one that got you? That's the oh. one you're like, I don't collect those. I have three. Those are for plebs. I still have three. <laughs> Pleb collectors are the dot biz. So as yeah. you can imagine, this gets quite expensive uh, for us. But thankfully, I was able to find a solution for that. And that's where Namecheap comes in. Namecheap is a place where, as you guessed by their name, you can buy domains for cheap. Therefore, that Namecheap. makes sense. Yeah. And you can also host sites and they have other services there as well. So if you want to be like Michael and collect domain names or you're actually starting a business and just need one, I suggest going to Namecheap. This is where we get ours. And we have a link in the show notes where you can start your collection and support our show all at the same time. You can do both at the same time. In fact, they could probably go to a really clever URL that you probably bought, Michael. So I got a domain for this, yeah. Ryan. What you do? <laughs> What's that domain, Michael? DestinationLinux.net slash Namecheap. See, the .net was a thing, but I wish it was .biz now because then I've been like, oh, you did buy a .biz. <laughs> well, so .net, I could add to my Linux. collection, Ryan. What about yeah. .tv? Yeah. Well, <laughs> don't, don't encourage him, Jill. Yeah. <laughs> so click that link and see if you can out-collect Michael. Ubuntu has released a new version with Ubuntu 23.10, or Mantic Minotaur. We've spent some time with it this week for the latest release, and we're going to give you our take on this new release and what we think about it. But before we do, let's cover some of the big changes. And of course, the biggest change is that it's updated the Linux kernel to 6.5, which improves a lot of power management stuff with some hardware enablement and a ton of other things, as well as we also got a new version of GNOME with GNOME 45, which introduces a ton of new features. We talked about that in a previous episode, so you can go check that out. We'll have the links in the show notes for that. First, I think we should talk about the name because Ubuntu has some of the best names out there, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. And Mantic I, Minotaur is a really good name for a distro. Let me just I like it. Yes, it's yeah. a good code name. It just, it's still not, it's, okay, I'll just be frank about it, or Michael about it. <laughs> so, the reason <laughs> so I bad. think it's not as good, because Disco Dingo is mm. just the best one <laughs> that ever. That is a good one, yeah. yeah. The, Disco Dingo was it's amazing. Gotta, it's got to fight that. Mantic Minotaur is pretty close. I'll, I'll put it in the top three. Groovy Gorilla, pretty good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I appreciate the fact that they're now playful names, whereas they used to be like serious code names. And I can't wait till we get to Q because then we have the opportunity to have quakas finally. <laughs> finally. Quakas, yeah. Quakas are the greatest animal ever. They're the most adorable things. And if you've never heard of one, Google it right now or duck, what duck, go it, whatever. Is quaka. a quaka. Q U O K K A. The most adorable thing. So and they like taking selfies. Yeah. It's just amazing. Oh, they are really cute. Yeah. Huh. But you know what they try what the uh DuckDuckGo tried to put in there? What is a Quaker? Oh, so interesting. That's what it tries to put. So it's Q U O K K A, just to to be clear. So you're not Which is what I said looking a at ago. Quakers saying how cute they are. If you would have listened when I Quaker. told you how to spell it, you could have just <laughs> well, I was just giving people a second chance because now oh, okay. they got their browser open. <laughs> Shut up. All right. So the other thing that's improved in here is the installer, right? It's, yes. it's yeah, received lots it's of awesome. love to simplify it, but it still has the options for the expanded installation options, such as things like adding in additional apps and things. But 
It's kind of completely made the process even simpler. And we have talked many times on this show about the fact that Ubuntu has the greatest installer out there. I think bar none. I don't think it's arguable. You can send an email and argue with me, but then you'd be wrong because I think Ubuntu has the best installer. <laughs> I like That's how you're saying it's not arguable. You can argue, but you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you can. I'm not going to tell you can't. It's free country, but you'd just be wrong doing it. And then they've reintroduced support for ZFS guided installations. And of course, you have the TPM back full disk encryption, which is was an experimental feature. And now they are adding that in for... It's you still know, an experimental feature. still experimental, but it's more like profound or more in front to no. enable it, set it up? No, it's an experimental feature. Just This is the first version it's had it. No, I know that, but I'm saying it's easier to like enable it now. It's like up front in the installer, in the advanced section. It's right there. No? I have no idea. Yeah. I didn't find it. <laughs> you didn't install it? I installed it, but I didn't use I didn't. I, didn't I don't have it. a TPM thing I wanted to use. Yeah. I didn't either. Uh, yeah, so. I have no idea. So <laughs> we're still helpful with these tips right <laughs> yeah. here. Well, I mean, in the installation, if you go to advanced, that's where your option is for TPM. I'm just saying, like, it's an experimental feature. It's still experimental. I don't think I went to it advanced. You no longer need to enter <laughs> passphrases at basic, boot but. manually. You remember when you would set it up and then you'd have to reboot and you'd have to enter a passphrase manually? But now, because of the TPM... It oh, yeah, uses, it's much better yeah. as a concept, especially if you're doing, like, a fleet of machines. Like, this is a lot easier to do because you can have it remote boot and then be able to administer it however you want versus the old style. If you had all of this set up and you had to use passphrases, you have to talk to each individual person to make sure they put the passphrase in and all that stuff. So this is definitely better in that situation. I, I don't know if I have that much need for it. I mean, I'm okay with the passphrase, but it is cool that they added it, you know? Absolutely. I mean, we got a community feedback not too long ago about someone who had missed that option to set up the full disk encryption and so they had went and redid it and did a new install right, and reinstall but, yeah mm. yeah so it's definitely there under the advanced features i think the advanced features i guess what i'm trying to say is in the installer the advanced feature was very prominent to me to get to like it was there i knew it was there it wasn't hidden it wasn't hidden. in this new installer and so it was like oh let me click advanced features and then you've got your tpm stuff there so what i'm trying to say is it's more prominently yeah i mean it's cool option. that they make it possible and I think they made the ZV, Z, the ZFS easier to get to, yes. to get access to. Yeah. So that's cool too. And they brought it back from the, they removed it in 2304 and they brought it back with this one, which is really cool. And the new installer is very nice. Yeah. It's so good. It looks good. The, the flow is nice. Like there's a lot of benefits to it. Uh, but I think the kind of the stealer of the show when it comes to Ubuntu's latest version is the app center mm -hmm. because yes. the app center God, so good. So is, much better. <laughs> looks good. It, it functions well. It has, there's a thing that I like where you can like chain install. So if you click multiple applications, you can choose to say, okay, do this install, this install and this install. And it will do it in a sequence where some stores will kind of collapse on that process. So it does it just fine. It has Debs and snaps right there built into it, which is really cool. And I'm going to blow people's minds. The Firefox snap is actually fine now. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it loads quickly. <laughs> but getting back to the, the Flutter-based App Center, I was just so impressed uh, how pleasing it was to the eye. It's so much nicer looking <laughs> than the pre previous Snap Store and so much more organized and so much faster. It's It, it felt like it, it loaded without even thinking about it. Uh, it loaded so fast, yeah. it's, but it was like a flutter. Yeah. It was. <laughs> uh -huh. exactly. I see what you did there, Michael. <laughs> I see what you did there. You know, not only that, the professional design of the store, you know, seems like it came from a multi billion dollar corporation or store that you would go to for software. For instance, they have sections like everything for your game night. Mm -hmm. And then they've got Steam there, Discord, Minecraft installer, all of that with yeah. big pictures. I mean, not huge, but, you know, big thumbnails so you can see what it is right there like they're curating software in a very professional manner and it just it looks like you're getting something i mean you are getting something fantastic but it looks like you're getting something fantastic too and it just yeah i'm not a huge i'm gonna not comment on the snap thing because you know i know a lot of people don't like snap all that stuff what i'm talking about is the store design mm -hmm. and it's freaking beautiful. It's beautiful i don't know of another store i like more than this one now yeah it's like whatever whoever's doing the design choices at ubuntu right now that team 
you are next level. Yes. Because you were yeah, doing some crushing awesome it. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, it looks good. I mean, the wallpaper is actually really good. Mm-hmm. I multiple times played around with that wallpaper because it's a maze. It's I, like a labyrinth. Yes. And uh, <laughs> for those who don't get the reference, it's because the Minotaur in the myths is a, is in the labyrinth. Yeah. It, it, it's cool. And I did try to find my way through it. And there's multiple ways to get through it. So... There, you know. Well, I did the maze, but when I drew on my screen, there was no button to erase the pen that I drew on my monitor. <laughs> like, oh, that's fine. All you do, do I need to shake my monitor? If to you get chew on the pen, it will go away. Oh, you chew on Ryan, the Ryan, that's how you make dead pixels. Don't do that. Oh, darn. Uh, nobody told me that in there. Uh, do that. No, I agree with you, Michael. The wallpaper looks fantastic. And somehow they kind of got away from a little bit, not fully, but that, I don't know, blaringly ugly orange and purple overdone combination that it's you see It's a very sometimes. subtle mix. So yes. the, the orange and purple is like the colors of Ubuntu. But for a long time, they made it really in your face orange mm-hmm. or too much. really yeah. in your face purple Magenta. with like this highlight <laughs> yeah. of, of like, uh, I forgot the name of the, the there's specific colors they use. Yeah. But this one is just so clean. Like it looks very really nice. Cool. Yeah. It has a nice pop to it. It's, it's not too much color. Although I was kind of disappointed when I turned on the dark mode and it turned off the wallpaper and made like a grayscale thing. I like that. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's nice that it has that, but I I don't know. For some reason, I wanted the wallpaper to be there. Like this not change. I, th- th- yeah. That's actually a good testament that the wallpaper was good this time, right? Yeah. Because I you didn't want it to, to shift. I didn't you want it to lose the color. You to stick with the defaults like I do. Yeah. Yeah, you like the well, like defaults. I, on Ubuntu. How did you like the fact <laughs> that you get the choice of light and dark mode in such a prominent manner? Again, so yeah. simple, like it, it pops up there during the install yeah. and boom, it's like instantaneous. Really, really well. It's really good. There's a lot of DEs and distros that have stuff like that, which is really nice. And I want more and more to do it. But this one, the way that Ubuntu does it is just cleaner. Like it's it's the clean, it's what people expect from Ubuntu, a very polished experience. And they deliver on that very well. And they also deliver that on the GNOME features because GNOME 45 introduces a lot of cool stuff, including the activity monitor, like the changer for where your workspaces. And so instead of the, the activities button that made no sense and meant nothing, it now has a workspace indicator when you switch back and forth. But when you click it, it does activate the overview still. So that, that's cool. And they implemented it very well. And I like the way they did it. And they also didn't stop there. They also added a bunch of other extensions, including like they have the ones that they've had for a long time, like the system tray icons gnome. They've had that and it's really nice, but they also introduced tiling uh, window management through an extension, which is really cool. So one of the things that I liked, but then also because everything else is so perfect, I'm going to be a little nitpicky here. And I completely agree this is nitpicky, but because everything's so perfect, I just want to mention it. When you're going through the install process, it has an option saying, hey, there's a newer version of the installer. I imagine that option's only there if there actually is a newer version of the installer. And when it tells you the newer version of the installer, the text is like, you're currently using Git 105672-Z12. Would you like to use Git 348921Z654? (laughs) And I'm like, eh, can we change that whole like code name stuff to something a little bit more legible? Other than that, and it's nitpicky, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. I didn't really even notice it and didn't bother me at all. But now that you mention it, it, there is no, it doesn't serve any purpose to anyone who's typically using it. If they're going to click a button that says, yeah, give me the update, that's all they need. Yeah. Really. That's it. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. Or just make an actual version number that isn't some weird Git and 18 well, characters. it's kind of funny afterwards. because the, the, I think that it's always going to do that. You know? It's always going to say every time there's a new version, within, what, maybe a day or two, there's some like tweaks or whatever because the way the installer works is it's you can independently update it so it doesn't require a fresh ISO. Yeah. That means that it's probably going to have some improvements in the period of time that just a few days. So you're always going to be presented with that because the ISOs are kind of like frozen in a period of time. So it does matter that that is addressed. So I, I it's not a big deal. You're right, it is nitpicky. But I do think it's, it's worth noting. So good job. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, you mentioned the one wallpaper with the puzzle. 
But yeah. did you see all the other man bear pig combinations they yeah, had? I, I didn't see any them. man bear pig combinations actually. <laughs> but I did see some other ones. Like they've I, got the 3D man bear pig. That's freaking amazing, dude. It's like it's it's got it's all it's the purple color, yeah. but it's like three dimensional and has like I don't know like these tree limb things going on in the background. I don't know, Jill. You're artistic. You'd have to like describe it because I don't have any artistic ability to describe yeah, you did, the good, thing. Good job. It's just three D and beautiful, and yeah. yeah, it to me it's got the cool man bear pig in the corner with the horns coming out. Like looks awesome. I, really I cool. use the one yeah. with the the circles with the the image of the monitor. So they also have a pixelated was... version too, which yeah. Zeb would love. You know, for those <laughs> Zeb used to be part of the show. If you want to go back in history and know what I'm talking about, because Michael says I always reference stuff. Nobody knows what I'm talking about, but everyone knows Zeb. It's been three Shut years, up, Ryan. Shut up. Michael. <laughs> All right, Jill. Yes. Michael and I have told you our favorite parts about <laughs> it is Manic your time. Man Bear Pig. To sign what are off your favorite parts about with this distro? So something very special. I actually installed Ubuntu 23.10 on my newly upgraded pink video podcasting and gaming rig that is actually sitting right next to me. It's a beautiful machine, man. <laughs> it's, Gorgeous. It's in a beautiful pink 1960s modern case with lots of pink and rainbow vomit RGB. And that's for Wendy, rainbow vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it glowing. It's beautiful. I like how you said 1960s modern. Yes. Like those that <laughs> 60s like that modern. It feels like a contradiction. Yeah. Those that sentence. <laughs> it's modern retro. Retro modern. Yeah. So um I, I just turned it on. It does get it pretty loud because it's pretty warm in here and it's near the mic. So I might turn it off at some point. Yeah. <laughs> um actually I might want to do that right now because it's pretty loud. But isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So this is why you have to watch the video version of this podcast so that you can see Jill's amazing pink retro modern PC yeah. there. So this modern is, retro 60s PC. This is uh Michael Ryan. You will remember this is that special pink case that Ryan's daughter liked the best and yes. voted for me to use out of several pink cases I bought. We put it to a vote on Destination Linux way back in episode 276. And on episode 279, we got the results. And this one was almost everyone's favorite, including mine and your daughter's. So I had yep. to pick it. <laughs> I love it. Made her day. Yep. Yeah. So Ubuntu 23.10 is actually installed alongside my Pop! OS 22.04 installed on this very machine. But there is something very, very special about this machine besides the color and design. It has a Ryzen 5 5600X CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM with an ASRock Phantom Gaming overclocked Intel Arc A7070 16 gigabytes of RAM nice. CPU. <laughs> Getting geek chills over here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So this is in that machine. <laughs> I nice. love it. So not only are we going to be talking about Ubuntu here and yes. your retro PC, retro modern <laughs> PC, but you put an Intel Arc in there, yes. which is something I've been wanting to play with for a long time. So how is the Intel Arc doing? Oh, it's running beautiful on Ubuntu 23.10. And one of the reasons why is because Ubuntu 23.10 is using the Linux kernel 6.5, which supports the Arc GPUs out of the box. And Mesa 23.2, which is actually the latest stable release of Mesa with updated Vulkan and OpenGL drivers. And yeah, my Arc uh, GPU worked out of the box. And that was very, very awesome. I got it working also on the Pop! OS that was installed on here, but that took a little bit of work because Pop! OS is based on Ubuntu 22.04, which has an older kernel kernel right. and older mesa and i had to update those to experimental in order to get it to work on pop <laughs> this is what we talk about all the time why it's important to get those hardware enablements yeah, yeah. so yep. yeah i just i and one of the things we were talking about earlier i wanted to mention is i really like the speed and simplicity of the flutter installer it you know it, it even asked like we were talking about earlier about if you want to upgrade it on uh, the installer on GitHub before installing. Now, honestly, I thought that was brilliant. That was uh, 
really nice that they did that. I actually still use the vanilla installer though because I wanted to see how the vanilla installer out of the box would work on this machine. So I did that and just overall. So you don't like the chocolate yeah. version. You wanted the vanilla version. Yeah. I wanted the vanilla okay. version. Yeah. Neapolitan is the way to go. <laughs> Neapolitan. Yeah. So overall, I just like the fit, polish and speed of Ubuntu 23.10, especially on this machine. I was really so impressed. It runs so zippy on this Arc GPU. I was just so happy. And uh, it runs. The, the other cool thing is I got to uh, test out the Intel Arc GPU on Wayland and Pipewire with Ubuntu 23.10. So nice. that's another important change to this release. They've They've had had already in previous releases changed to using Wayland and Pipewire, but it is much more cleaner in this version <laughs> for sure. It just ran so much better, and uh, yeah. And actually, as for gaming, a lot of games I like to play and tested worked out of the box, like the Talos Principle, Trackmania Stadium Two, Counter Strike Two, and Refunct. But as what about Rocket League, yeah, uh, Rocket League plays. I did test that one. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm sorry, you had to test that. Joe. That, that game's made for kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like Rocket League. <laughs> I, I was. I'm. I'm surprised I didn't try it, but it's yeah. it's fantastic that you did, Jill. Yeah. yeah. But as for you know, many people on both Linux and Windows, regardless of what GPU they used, Cyberpunk. 2077 yeah. would just black out when I tried to boot and give an error oh. message. But after spending several hours troubleshooting, I got Cyberpunk 2077 to launch and play great on Ubuntu 23.10. I actually switched to using an older version of Proton, which is what was the key, mm. 7.0-6. And I set launch op options to skip the intro and the start screen and, and all that. So I didn't have to worry about that. But it was changing to the older version of Proton <laughs> that worked. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's actually a good tip and trick for people because that yeah. works with other games. If you can't get a certain game to run it, absolutely. Linux, try going in there and trying a different version of Proton, and it may work in that version as they get it patched yeah. to the latest version. Some of the games don't work in the latest and greatest all the time. Yeah. Speaking of which, random update from a previous episode, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater issues have now been addressed and you can play it online and you don't, it doesn't require you to have your uh, connection at all times. Multiplayer is good to go now. Nice. Oh, wow. And, awesome. Yep, good to go. Oh, goody. Cool. I need to to install that on my Intel Arc rig now. Well, Cyber, <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077 is one of my favorite games yes. of all time. Like it is... It was one of those games when it first came out, apparently everybody hated it, but I didn't read anything about it before, you know, and I played it and I was loving it. And then when I got online one day and I was looking up like a tip for something, it was like everyone was complaining about how much they hated it because I guess it didn't meet expectations from what they had claimed at the very beginning. But that company has come back and fixed all the complaints and things and made the game even better. And I thought it was great when it launched. So yeah, uh, it's just one of those really cool games. It's adult though, so not for one to give to your kids. It's well, not a very adult. I've theme. been enjoying it too, and I don't usually like l like the kind of games where you're you know driving through cities and doing things. But this one yeah. was so much fun, and it has so yeah you know a lot of. Because uh, all really, the augments and yeah, stuff. Yeah, all the augments. Do, and very cyberpunky. I love the cyberpunk look and it, and yeah, it's just really fun to play. And I actually got it uh, running at 48 frames per second on ultra settings, 65 frames per second on high settings, and 80 frames per second on media settings at 1440p res, which I was very happy about. And nice. I was so excited about getting Cyberpunk 2077 to play. I posted screenshots to Michael and Ryan in our Discord chat. <laughs> and I linked yes. them in the show notes. <laughs> Enjoyed the heck out of that. And <laughs> what I realized is Jill's a hacker. She was going to do whatever it took to yes. get that game to work. Absolutely. And hack the code, reverse engineer the code, or put some skip options in there. And it was not it. allowing yeah. the machine to be a punk to her Cyberpunk. Yes. There you go. <laughs> and I wanted to mention in chat, uh, Tex says, wasn't the Intel Arc stable in kernels 6.2? Yes, it was, but 6.5 added a lot more enhancements to make it run faster. 
<laughs> yeah. That was the thing. Intel's been doing a lot of work yes. on improving those cards out there. Which One of the best is, things about Intel. Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't just release this thing out there and, you know, it is what it is. They keep improving it, improving it, which I appreciate because we really want a third player in the GPU market. Yeah. Like really bad. So uh, Intel is definitely stepping up their game. And I hear a new flagship card's coming out from Intel next year that's supposed to really yeah. start amping up their competition. So very exciting stuff. Yeah, and Intel is so, actually actively working on the on the um, encoder, AV1 encoder drivers for OBS and uh, Blender and, and other applications. There's a GitHub for it right now. So they're, yeah, very they're nice. working on that. Yeah. So let's get back to the topic that we're here to discuss, good which point, is Ubuntu. Michael. Cyberpunk 2077 so, <laughs> is such a good game. Ubuntu 23.10 rocks so, the Intel art. Ryan. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's awesome, Jill. Uh, so, so Ryan, how did it go for you, buddy? I mean, I feel like everything we talked about from the clean installer through to the speed Firefox, by the way, when you mentioned that, mm -hmm. I think you almost undersold it. It was like an immediate launch. Yeah. Like immediate that's launch. And you remember I complained about that before in a prior to the snap version of Firefox. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I did know, a test actually because I didn't notice how long it took because it was so quick. And I was talking to someone on like a Discord channel and they said, Well, how fast did it go? I don't I don't know. I, I'll reboot the entire system just to check. It was and dang near instantaneous. Yeah. It was I counted yeah. three seconds. So <laughs> three seconds. The, yeah. From the previous 15 seconds. Yeah. That's very good. <laughs> that's very good. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, from the beauty of it, I feel like this is a little bit of a return to what I expect from Ubuntu. Some of the other, I'm just going to be honest, some of the other releases have been a little bit disappointing to me. I feel like things were starting to get a little, I don't know. There just, was a period of time that Ubuntu didn't seem like they cared about the desktop. And this yes. is a good example that they are, are this showing is a that good they example do. Of, I felt like Ubuntu's back. It gave yeah. me a little yeah. bit of nostalgia to be like, I love BlendOS because I can use a little bit of everything, anything I want, because it's Blend OS. But, I mean, part of me was like, I got an extra hard drive. Maybe I'll just install Ubuntu on it and play with it for a while, because it's so pretty. It's so well done. Like, they just, they they knocked it out of the park with this one. Mm -hmm. It's all of the right things. They're speaking my language with this. You know, uh, I think the one thing that keeps me continuing to whine about in Ubuntu that they could fix if they want me to shut up, which... I mean, that right there should absolutely make you uh, want to do this is to figure out a way to get the hardware enablement stacks in faster from the later kernels. If Ubuntu could figure that out, I think there's nobody else out there that could really say they have a better distro than Ubuntu. Yeah, the whole the, the overall package of Ubuntu 2310 is very good. Beautiful. If they had the hardware stuff solved, then... There's really not much else to complain about, except for snaps, right, people? Because that's what people like. In to comes the snap. So Warriors. I would like to point out that snaps are not as bad as people think. And uh, so first they've of all, they've gotten better. Oh, they've, they've improved tremendously. The, yeah. the yeah. whole concept of snaps is interesting because the flat packs are also good. I really like them. The snaps are good, and now they're much more performant and I didn't really even notice if something was a snap versus a dip. I did a bunch of different tests. I installed various different things. I launched them however they were supposed to launch. And then I didn't really notice which was which, which is a good sign because the whole reason people complain most of the time is solely the speed of how it launches. So mm -hmm. this is a much better experience, even just from 2304 because 2304, the snaps were not as fast. So I'm really happy about that. So the experience is not hindered by the slow launch of those applications, which is not that big a deal overall, but it is annoying when you're waiting 10, 15 seconds for an application to launch. It does get irritating if that happens multiple times. So I get that part, but I just wanted to say like the Ubuntu 2310 experience is probably the best one that Ubuntu's ever made. I agree. Now that's, yeah. that's, I mean, that makes sense because every single time they're supposed to get better, that's the whole goal of new releases and everything. Mm -hmm. But this one is not just a better release. It's a significant jump towards a highly polished experience 
versus if you go back to the 2204, which was okay, Mm -hmm. but not the greatest thing. Yeah, this just had so much, it has so much polish to it and fast. Everything was happening instantaneous, which is yeah, what we've been wanting out of our speed. our Ubuntu uh, vanilla GNOME desktop. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And also, really quick, I just want to make it clear for people who are not aware of this, this is an interim release, which means it has nine, nine months. months of support. Yeah. And that means if you choose to use 2310, you will need to update to 2404. Now, if you are using a LTS, you're not required to update every six months. You can do that if you want to. But when you're using an interim release, after nine months, you won't be, have the option to do anything with it. So the best option here is to upgrade when the next version comes out, which will probably be another example of a good distro when you go for the, like the next LTS, because they're probably going to take this one where they innovated and tried a bunch of new stuff and then polish it all around for the LTS. And then they're adding the hardware enablement features to update monthly with the latest hardware releases in each version, which I've been promised by the Ubuntu team is coming in the next so, Ubuntu. And I so, made all of that up, but that's what I yeah, want them to I was about to say, to, say, to be yeah. fair, to, to clear to everyone, none of that happened. Yeah. But Ubuntu <laughs> needs to do that. It would be but, awesome. Thank if, you. If they did something similar to the OpenSUSE slow roll, that would be mm. fantastic. Like, I, I would love that. but. You know, where we are right now, it's still pretty good. And in in the earlier in the intro, Ryan talked about misconceptions. And before mm-hmm. we move on to the section where we actually discuss the misconception that was brought up to this, I just wanted to say one thing. Snaps also have a history of misconceptions around them. Mm-hmm. First of all, snaps are not as slow as people claim, especially Anymore. now. They're much yeah. faster now, but they weren't as bad. But more importantly, I saw this thing that is it's the most annoying thing to me is when people say that Ubuntu is known for not invented here and they say, well, why didn't they pick flat packs? And I just want to point out that snaps were before flat packs. You know, yeah. Just to solve that little thing right there. Yes. <laughs> this episode of Destination Linux is sponsored by Linbit. Linbit has been keeping digital businesses running for over 20 years. They're the makers of open source products like DRBD, which is high availability software that has been part of the Linux kernel since 2010, and LinStore, industry-leading open source software-defined storage. Linbit has an active presence in the open source community, and they collaborate with the community to help identify and build new features. Linbit provides enterprise-grade software that runs on a variety of platforms and OSs without vendor lock-in. What that means is, is that you could choose the software on any platform, including specific hardware that you want to use or just off-the-shelf hardware that you get and connect it. You get, all of this stuff can be interchanged really easily. And with DRBD and LinStore, you can have high-speed replicated block storage in almost any configuration, whether it's Kubernetes, Apache Cloud, or Open Nebula. There's even DRBD proxy for long-distance replication. Linbit is run by its founders to this day, and all of its engineers and developers are in-house with offices in Europe and North America, which allows them to have global 24-7 support to complement their enterprise offerings. Visit linbit.com to learn more about the people behind Linbit and the awesome software for block storage, duplication, and more. Now let's move on to the next All right, section. misconceptions. So this week... You know, the community feedback at the beginning was perfect, but I got more community (laughs) feedback since you wanted some additional community feedback, Michael. I just felt like it needed some more content in the show. Okay. Well, here you go. That's what it was. Guido from Germany wanted to get everyone's thoughts on this article. And he goes on to say, I like your podcast a lot. And since I spotted it, I listen to every episode. Yay. And Ryan awesome. is so amazing. He demands. That part is not in there. You oh. mixed up the two and oh, repeated yeah. the. This is well, a he different says, person. Mostly because of you, Ryan. <laughs> also not there. <laughs> it, it does say mostly because of you in the sentence, but I added the Ryan part. Well, I think they're. I'm, now I'm curious <laughs> who they were talking It's probably me. It, me. It's probably me. Jill. It's, Let's <laughs> face it, it's Jill. It's Jill. It's Jill. Yeah. So they go on to say, I think there isn't any other podcast which has a good mix of interesting content, fun, and really nice people. Definitely talking about Jill. Thanks for the enrichment. 
Uh, as someone who likes Linux but also uses Windows for gaming, which is fine, people, I was interested what exactly makes Linux more secure than Windows. Security is one of the top arguments when it comes to the question of using Windows or Linux. After I Googled a while, I found a quite interesting article about Linux and security and have no clue if most of it is, or not all of it, is true. Maybe you could discuss it or parts of it in the future. The URL of the article, which we'll have in the show notes, is here. And thank you very much for your podcast. I hope there will be a ton more episodes. Kind regards, Guido from Germany. There will be a ton more episodes, especially yeah. thanks to our patrons who help make this show possible. Because without them, we couldn't do the show. We couldn't afford all the equipment and the subscriptions and the servers and all the stuff to run that. So thank you, Guido. We really appreciate that yep, comment. Thank you so much. Now, let's talk about this article. So I would say when I was going through this article and I was reading some of it, that I saw some truth mixed with a lot of hearsay and some really old stuff in there and mixed with a lot of nonsense yes mm -hmm. yes and so there, when i say hearsay i mean there's a lot of people in the community who kind of come up with these arguments it, it's almost like chat gpt where they say it with authority so people automatically assume it must be true you know how people just believe whatever chat gpt throws out there that uh, and happen, so you Ryan. see some That's of these ridiculous. kind of myths happen in linux and open source quite a bit uh, the first paragraph, for instance, I think is a good starting point. It states, Linux being secure is a common misconception in the security and privacy realm. Linux is thought to be a secure primarily because of its source model, popular no. usage in servers, small user what? base, and confusion about its security <laughs> features. Ridiculous. What? Yeah. Yeah. So right there... Uh, Great example of nonsense. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense because you first say it's because of its popular usage in servers, which, you know, it powers the entire internet practically. And like 90% of it. Yeah. Azure and AWS and all of these massive data platforms that are taking over everything. Uh, it powers all of that. So it's very popular, right? What an amazing target. In fact, one of the greatest hack targets you could probably ever go after would be Linux from that. But then go on to say, also because of its small user base. Those two don't no, equate. No. <laughs> so they probably yeah. mean desktop usage, but that also makes no sense because what's a more important target? Something that's always connected to the internet, like a server, and mm. that runs 90% of the internet, or the desktop users, like, uh, no. Now, I have seen people use this small user base in terms of desktop users as a security through obscurity claim. That's nonsense. First of all, that's not a good thing. Like, so that's not a thing to claim as security. That's, that's why they call it security through obscurity, meaning it's not actually security. So that's not, all, that's not a good point. But also, the sentence started with because of its source model. What does the source model have to do with the security aspect? That's to do with a completely different type of thing. The actual reason is the permission model of, of Linux. By default in Windows, you are given administrative powers instantly, mm -hmm. no matter what. And when you want to do something, it just says, want to do it? Okay, go. That's it. That's their method of security. No, no, that's not true. You have to right click and, and click run as administrator. It's... It's two steps, Michael. <laughs> True, two yeah. steps. Okay. Yeah. But also, there are things that can just launch it and will... True. Like, because yes. you yeah. are an administrator, the account is an administrator, they can just launch themselves in Windows. But in Linux, it's a completely different system where if it's a... You download a malicious uh, virus or whatever onto a Linux system, it's not going to be able to run because first of all, it won't have executable powers in the first place mm -hmm. and you have to manually activate it to do it. Now, if you install an application and then give it root one during the installation, which what happens when you use a dev file, if you, in, if you, when you install something through dev, you are giving whatever in that dev root privileges. So it's not a good thing to just download devs from the internet. That's just a side point. But the fact that if you just accidentally down, download something, it's not really going to affect you because it doesn't have permission to affect you. And that's yeah. really the significant difference. Yeah. Now, there are many other differences, but that's the significant difference between the Windows security and the Linux security. The permission model is just much better. Yeah, and and that's, yeah. you know, Linus created that systems 
system of check and bal- checks and balances for this reason. So there were so many different levels of uh, security having to be compromised that it takes so much to get down, you know, even to the kernel to hack it. <laughs> it's just, it's amazing. Yeah, I think, you know, you can go out there and poke holes in any operating system, Mac OS, Windows or Linux, yeah. and have legitimate complaints to say certain yeah. things like this article talks about flat packs, for instance, and some of the sandboxing issues. And yeah. this is something flat packs very aware of and have been mm-hmm. actively patching and fixing and finding ways to But also kind of- for just to remind you, we talked about this particular like in this article that was linked that was the was provided to us in the feedback, yeah. which will be in the show notes. In this article, they reference the reason why flat packs were bad is because of the flat kill website, yeah. which we debunked yeah. in our previous episode of Destination yes, Linux. Yes, we did. Fair. Because that yeah. website is filled with a bunch of nonsense. Like, for example, there was this one part where it says, you can't, like, the sandboxing is not really sandboxing. And also, the themes don't work with my system. You can't have both of those things. <laughs> <laughs> if it's sandboxed, it's not accessing the system. And if it's getting themes, it's not sandboxed. So their own list of reasons why it was bad is a contradiction to itself. So anyway, that's this. Uh, that was just a refresher watch of the, that. We that debunked that one. Yeah. There's a yeah. bunch of ones, yes. But they, they go on to say a bunch of stuff like that. And so, like I said, there's some little truths here sprinkled in. There's some things that we already know. There's talks about X11, of course, which... That's why in the previous episode, we were talking about how important it is to get to Wayland. We know X11 is spaghetti code and really has some security holes and things in it that need to be fixed. But there was nothing here that made me go, oh my gosh. And I think even if you don't take our word for it, because none of us are security experts, although we've had plenty on the show. Yes. I think when you look at massive organizations taking their data and they're putting it on Linux platforms. When they had the choice, they could put it on Windows. Mm -hmm. There's a reason. They don't. Put it (laughs) on Mac and they don't. They're choosing Linux for a reason. And and I'm not saying Linux is perfect and that you're not going to find security holes. You absolutely will uh, find security holes in Linux. You'll find plenty of them. The difference is the community is going to go out there and be working on to fix them as soon as they get discovered. Or before they, it comes out, the software. Before they yeah. even come out in some cases, but they're going to be actively working on them. And I think the idea that you're ever going to have a attack vector, whether, again, Windows, Apple, or Linux, that is unattackable is impossible in our current technology that we have today. And so, therefore, yes, you can write an article and poke holes in Linux security and certain things. But when you look at it and truly compare it to a Windows and Mac, I think you'll find that most people would agree Linux is one of the most secure. But that's not the only reason to use it, Mm -hmm. frankly. It's just one of the major benefits of Linux. Better performance by a lot. Mm -hmm. When you look at open source software and the digital divide portion of it itself, the speed of it, the privacy elements of it, you got Windows out there selling your data. You don't have that happening in Linux. So there's a lot of things that you can you look at. You don't have tons of ads in your main start menu yeah. like you but, do in Windows. And you can I keep your old computers biggest, out of the landfill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. computers, yeah. There you yeah. go. Uh, but I think the biggest advantage to Linux, as someone who was all Windows and made a living off of Windows and, and running Windows and fixing Windows and all of that, is that... I learned more about the operating system, desktop environments, and how an OS works using Linux than I ever knew in the decades before using Windows because Windows hides so much of that from the user. They kind of make it idiot-proof. And because I became more knowledgeable, I became better at security and privacy of the things that I implemented. And I think the most important security tool is the user is making the user more knowledgeable and so they can avoid these common traps and things. Because like I said, there is no OS OS out there that is not susceptible to some type of hack. Mm -hmm. And Linux encourages you to really understand how your system works. And through that, you're just going to be more secure by itself. So I love this, Guido. By the way, none of this is towards you. We're talking about the article, to be very clear. I love that you sent this to us. We we appreciate this because I had never seen this article in the first place. So when you sent it to ask us our opinion of it, we're giving you our opinion of it. So yeah. I think that this is a very important topic 
because a lot of people use this phrase that is wrong. It is a misconception that Linux is secure. Now, if you say that specifically, it might give people a false sense of security where they think that they can do whatever they want and there's never going to be ramifications. And that's just not the case. There's less consequences and you're less likely to be hit by things, but it's still possible. So I would like to change that terminology and hopefully people will spread this and just say that Linux is the most secure, you know, actually most secure while also being convenient because you can find an operating system out there that is the most secure thing ever created that can't run anything. Yeah. So there are options for that yes, if you want. There are. <laughs> but Linux is a nice balance. Yes. Yeah, I agree. And and Tuck said all of those sentences I used in our patron room in one sentence, so much better. Uh, said any system's weakest point is the user. That's really what I was trying to say. It yeah. took me eight sentences to say what Tuck yes. said in one, but I, I think that's a really key point. And I think Linux really is one of those platforms that makes you want to learn and, and makes it. Yeah. Also, makes the you open source model thing is an important factor because with Windows, we have no idea what issues there are. And there are tons of them. They literally have a celebratory, weird thing like called Patch Tuesdays where once a week they always release new patches for things <laughs> that they found that are terrible. Whereas with Linux, we know what's going to be fixed because we can watch it as it happens. And we have websites that are paying attention to it and creating articles like Pharonix and letting us know. Yeah, Yeah. and and there's things like that. You you can also talk directly to the the developers. And then there's the other factor of when there are vulnerabilities found, which bugs happen, of course, they are addressed Mm -hmm. very quickly, quickly. typically before the announcement of the bug or the vulnerability. So... There are many cases and many reasons why Linux is a more secure platform, but that's not necessarily the only reason people should use it like we talked about earlier. But I do want to point out one more thing. It was just unfortunate because of the whole sandboxing argument is saying that it's not fully sandboxed, but nothing really is. Anything that's actually fully sandboxed is going to be limited and then therefore kind of irritating. So if you want to have... Like, for example, this is a fantastic complaint that people give for flat packs. Fantastic in the sense that it is nonsense and kind of humorous. And that is, but it has access to our home folder. Well, what if you have an application in a flat pack that needs to put files on your computer? What else are you expecting it to do? Like, of course it does. Yeah. That's how applications (laughs) work with a computer. So Mm -hmm. some of these, and that was in the article about complaining that it has like certain accesses and stuff. Uh, It's it's fine. There are (laughs) flat pack permission tools if you're concerned about that stuff in which you can go permissions managing tools. Oh yeah, of course, like Flat Seal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you can go in there and set, if you want to turn all that Mm -hmm. stuff off, you can go do that. So you have options there. And because a... Linux user isn't going to just stupidly trust everything as 100% secure. You're going to uh, probably research that. And Challenge go, hey, I don't want accepted. this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Linux is the most used operating system in the world, and most people just don't know it. And there's a reason for that. It is more secure <laughs> than, you know, the mainstream ones that people use on their desktop. <laughs> When yeah. the <laughs> when the argument about what, what uh, like when people say that Linux is has a small user base, they're yeah. specifically talking about the desktop. Desktop, yeah. When you talk about literally every other form of computing, uh, yeah. Linux dominates all of them. <laughs> Servers, supercomputers, mobile phones, the Internet of Things, th- everything. Yeah. Space Center. Like the International Space Station, basically, NASA, if you, you if you can if you can name an industry, Linux is dominating that one, except for the desktop. We're working on that, people. Yeah, even yeah, Microsoft cool. Windows uses Linux on the back end and and to serve Windows. <laughs> well, also now directly As inside you, it with WSL. Yeah, right? exactly. Microsoft they they have given yours. up on trying to up. battle it. They just said, okay, in order to have certain tools, we'll just put Linux in our system yeah. because we acknowledge that that system is better than ours. And also, like Ryan talked about earlier, Azure, for people who don't know what Azure is, that is Microsoft's cloud platform system. Mm-hmm. The, and that 
is I think 65% Linux power, yeah. which is hilarious because it's Microsoft's they own didn't use system. Windows. They used Linux. Yeah. Microsoft didn't use their own product yeah. for their emerging product <laughs> for the cloud. Exactly. They used Linux. There was that an, should tell you yeah. the security differences between the two. Now, I I think we need to move on from this because we I think we've beat this one into the ground. But I just want to say that Guido, you did mention too that you still game in Windows, and that's totally fine. Yeah, like oh, keep yeah. gaming in Windows if you want to. Uh, I, yeah, Linux gaming is a lot better these days. But Linux gaming, to- yeah, yeah, it's it's gotten so good that every game I want to play is available. Mm-hmm. But also, if you want to use Windows for your games, that's fine too. Yeah, yeah. it's for it, there. You might find people online complaining about you're not a real Linux user. There's no such thing as a real Linux user. If you use Linux, you're a Linux user. That's it. Absolutely. Yep. That's all you need. That's all Go you need enjoy it. But before we move on, there is something I want Jill to cover because she mentioned this earlier, <laughs> and it is probably the best nonsense quote in this article. So, Jill, yes. what was that quote? So, the kernel has huge attack surface and is constantly adding new and dangerous features. And my reaction what? to this was, <laughs> wow, just Wow. Not only is the sentence inaccurate, it also needs to be grammar checked. <laughs> Cuz <'Cause laughs> it, it, it's supposed to say the kernel has huge attack surfaces and is constantly adding new and dangerous features. Jill went professor mode on them. I <laughs> yeah. love it. Jill over wrecked. there taking them to school. I think we need to move on into gaming because Jill, I had a different experience awesome. than I've ever had in gaming in my life Mm -hmm. the other day because of this game pick. And so tell us about our game of the week this week. Uh, So we have many in our community who have various levels of sight impairment, like myself, or those who are completely blind. So the game this week is one that anyone can play. It's called Crimson Trials. And it was actually made for the games for blind gamers for the December 2021 Game Jam. And this is an audio-only game, and it describes itself like this. Complete skill testing trials created by your captor to earn your freedom. Placed in a restrictive pod, shoot at oncoming threats as the automated pod moves along the track. You must listen closely for enemies and obstacles around you and react quickly in order to survive. Wow, just wow. So Crimson Trials is a wonderfully immersive audio game that uses sound effects which are heard in your left or right speaker. So make sure to have stereo speakers or headphones to play. Yeah. For instance, you might hear a growl or an alarm coming from the left or right speaker. If you Very hear cool. a growl coming from your left speaker, you hit the left That's arrow right. <laughs> to shoot your blaster. <laughs> <laughs> or, or from the right speaker, you hit the right arrow to shoot your blaster. <laughs> and the growls kind of sounded like doom growls. too. <laughs> yeah, they did. So, Jill, I've got to tell you my experience playing this game. Okay, I want to hear all so about it, right? we had a listener write in, and they asked us if we could cover some audio-only games. I'd never searched for this before. And so I searched through some audio-only games. This was one of the first ones I came across. Yeah. And, you know, never having played one, I was trying to figure out how, because it said shooter. I'm like, I love shooters. So <laughs> let me see. How, I was trying to figure out how this thing is going to work. And it starts, obviously, with just a black screen there's nothing on the screen and this audio kicks in and starts narrating to you yes and then the sound effects kick in but again no i can't see anything nothing's changing there's only audio coming through and it starts taking me through a tutorial of how to play the game which was really mm-hmm. well done mm-hmm. but then once the tutorial goes away and the person stops speaking i'm just in my mind only yeah. listening to this audio And the audio is very, very well done, especially if you put headphones on. And it was at night and I was by myself writing the show when I was kind of doing this, preparing for this. Nice. And my heart started racing as I'm (laughs) listening so intently because it's not like it's blasting it and you've got like three seconds to hit a button. It's about reaction. It's instantaneous. Yeah, it's very quick. So you're doing obstacles and things and you're hearing all of these things go around in this cave. And it's just this audio sensation 
that I had never experienced before because I'm so used to having visuals that go along with yeah. something like this to help me cue stuff. Oh, and yeah. now I only have my ears to, to kind of, it's just, it was freaking brilliant. I absolutely loved yeah, it. Like I, it made me have physical reactions, heart racing, awesome, that type Brian. of thing, listening to this. It's so cool. You got to check this game out. This is one of one of the ones that really, it's just a game genre I never played before. Yeah. It's amazing. And make sure, you know, if you have vision or partial vision, I recommend closing your eyes when you play this game to get the full effect. Because yeah. just imagine that you are blind trying to play the game. And and yeah. it is so much more immersive that way. And honestly, I've played many audio-only games for the blind over the years. And this one has one of the best uses of sound design and strategy with uh, hitting the the either left or right arrow or up and down arrow to, to put a shield around your pod. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> or to, yep. You got to shield yeah. your pod up at certain yeah. points. You've got to shoot different places depending on what's going on. And then you have an indicator that you can hit that tells you your health and the status yeah, of your shields and other things, which is really cool. Like they, they thought of it all and it's just a couple buttons to learn. And yet it was such a fascinating advanced game. Yeah. And really. And this is proof of why our community makes this show so, so much awesome. better because <laughs> that would be something I'd have never looked into before. And because somebody wrote in to look for that, I found it and now have a new genre of something to check out. Yeah, like, I mean, I've never kids even to play. thought of this kind of game, and it's pretty yeah. cool as a concept. Yeah. So I, I, have, I didn't get a chance to play it this week. I am now kind of incentivized, mm, and I want to do it in like a special way. I want to stream my reaction to it. That would be and cool. And see how that works. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to try to do that this week. We'll see. Oh, that would Love be it. so cool. Well, what's nice is Crimson Trials is free to play on itch.io right on the website. So right when you load yep. the website, it says hit space to start the game. So so oh, nice. y- you don't have to navigate a website. It just, or download yeah, anything. Or, or download yeah. anything. But it does have a separate download for our Linux penguins because it supports Linux if out you of the want box. To. Yeah, you can play it right yeah. through the browser. Or you can download it for the Linux folks. Yep. Yeah. It's awesome. All right, Jill, take us in the software spotlight. What do we got there? Yeah. So this week, our software spotlight comes from you, the community. Yay. This is a great community episode. (laughs) So David wrote us and said this. Hi, I thought I'd drop a line following the tip about Lone Wolf from last week with another interesting alternative, App Flowy which I used synced via my NextCloud instance. It's probably not quite production ready yet, but looks lovely and includes Notion-like functionality as well as Kanban. So it's called App Flowy. And on the website, it describes itself like this, a secure workspace for your wikis and projects and a centralized place for your tasks, notes, and projects. Organize and visualize your data in tables, boards, calendars, and more. And AppFlowy is the open source alternative to the popular Notion Kanban board app. I know a lot of people who use Notion. So I was really happy to get this recommendation from one of our uh, viewers because I didn't know about this one. (laughs) And AppFlowy is actually community-driven. It's extensible and customizable with plugins, templates, themes, and fonts. And it is AI powered using a rich text editor, which is awesome. Also, very cool. You can opt to use end to end encryption. So you could use it or choose not to, which I thought was really awesome. And it's easy, easy peasy to use, has a nice user interface, and you have a choice of light or dark mode (laughs) it's mandatory these days if you don't have light and dark mode don't even show up to the app (laughs) store exactly i want to see your face how dare you (laughs) only give us a light mode yeah Yeah. (laughs) and you can download your choice of dot deb dot rpm or just a classic dot tar dot gz and coming in december there will be mobile apps for apple and uh, android so very cool. And it's a AppFlowy is actually a great example of a Kanban visual card project management tool. It's one of the best. 
Yeah, th- this is yeah. The, really the thing that's the most interesting <laughs> for me is the notion aspects. Yeah. Because the Kanban, the Kanban thing is good. I, I like that. We talked about that in Lone Wolf mm-hmm. last week. Yeah. It is a good concept. But the notion stuff is so interesting because for those that don't know, notion is something that allows you to have a variety of different kinds of notes. So you can have a table system with a spreadsheet kind of built in. You could have... Uh, basic notes. You could have a to-do, and in any case, you can have Kanban as well. And having all of that in an open source solution is just, it's awesome. But Lone Wolf's a better name because it's just cooler. So there's that. Lone Wolf <laughs> is a cool name. App Flowy is still a good name. Yeah, it cute. is. I guess you're it's right. Kind yeah. of said it. App Flowy. I was App- like... Flowing. I, I, I kind of felt like that could be some big name software product we're all using in the future there. You're right. You're right. I take it back. Yeah. I take I'm, it back. I'm now, based on the Notion thing, I would kind of want it to be NoteFlow. <laughs> mm. yes. Or NoteFlowy. Yeah. But. Is that your tip and trick, Michael? That is not. <laughs> NoteFlowy oh. Wolf. No, that's just my opinion of what would be cool. Okay. Now, I do think this, this application definitely needs the phone versions to be a full replacement for people who are using something else. Like I'm using something else that has all of those device connected. So as soon as those are available, when like December, whenever that happens, I will definitely be giving this a chance uh, because it, it looks Mm -hmm. very appealing. Are you saying right now this will replace windows notepad for you when it gets (laughs) put on mobile? I do not use windows, Ryan. Oh, okay. Sorry. (laughs) What's the tip and trick, all. Michael? <laughs> Not anymore, actually. I don't even have it in a VM anymore. So it's huh. been years since I did that. So Look get wrecked. All right. So the tip of this week. What? The tip, the tip of the week this week. <laughs> what are you, Mario? The tip, the tip of this the week. The tip of the week is, is, <laughs> is the installing Ubuntu restricted extras. Because if you plan to check out Ubuntu 23.10, there is an option for this during the install, which does make it really easy. It's just a checkbox. But in case you miss it, you can also manually install it afterwards. But what are the restricted extras exactly? Now, the way you install it is basically apt install Ubuntu dash restricted dash extras. But what are they? So it gives you the ability to have extra codecs and things like support for MP3 with the lane codec and unencrypted DVD playback. Microsoft TrueType core fonts. There you go, Michael. Uh, code, uh, thanks, buddy. Codex for common audio and video files and many more things, including I think it still supports Adobe Flash, which <laughs> might yes. be the only thing left that supports Thank Adobe goodness. Flash. Thank goodness. Wouldn't want to miss that one. <laughs> but anyway, the reason they do this is because of basically licensing issues and having it bundled in the system by default puts a lot of like legal issues in the gray area, so to speak. So having a checkbox where you choose to put it is makes it kind of, well, I don't even know if it's that's still a gray area, maybe, but it makes it a lot less likely for them to get any kind of rec- ramifications for that. So yeah. that's why it's separate. And if you miss the checkbox in the install, this is how to get it. And if you want to get the full command, you'll find that in the show notes. So Ubuntu Summit. It's just right around the corner, Michael. Yay. It actually is right around the corner. It's only <laughs> two weeks away. <laughs> two Less than weeks two weeks away, away actually. Yeah. And Michael will be attending Ubuntu Summit, so you might want to plan on going there yourself. And we've already mentioned in previous episodes that Michael's going to do a talk about marketing and open source, which I've seen prior talks that Michael has given on this subject. And I know this is going to be an updated version, so I'm very excited to hear it. It's a completely different version, actually, right? We have had people write in and say, hey, their business model has changed or they're taking your advice and utilizing it for marketing and open source, which is something that's very important that open source typically doesn't do very well. So I think this is a really important topic. A lot of people don't think about it. That's the problem. And I'm very happy that you're bringing that talk there to them and a new updated version. It's not just an updated version. It is a completely rewritten, brand new talk. It's about the same topic, but it's completely different. And you might be wondering, why are you rewriting the entire thing? Well, funny story. I lost the other one. I have no idea where it is. So I just (laughs) make it. Aw, you should have saved it on a floppy disk. 
There you go. I would <laughs> probably lose the floppy disk too, Jill. Uh, <laughs> no, because in a floppy disk, you get the floppy disk cases that have the little lock on the front yeah. and all of that. I would probably huge. lose the box with yeah, the floppy in it. Would. That's that's uh, typically what I do. And Michael's going to be all around the Ubuntu Summit, hosting, moderating panels for AMAs, all kinds of things. So he's going to do some vlogging there as whoa, well. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't just say vlogging and act yeah. like that's just a norm. What we're I mean, doing <laughs> is what you do much every day more. On TikTok than just I don't post on TikTok my own stuff. I should, though. So thanks, bro. I'll do it. Now, the next thing, <laughs> some dances, but not really. So what, what I want to talk about is the vlog is not just a regular vlog. I, I made a vlog for scale from last year. Well, the year before. And it was basically one video that kind of did the whole synopsis of the, con of the conference. This is going to be different because I'm going to be doing a daily vlog every day. And because of the time zone differences, <laughs> it might even be released on that day, technically speaking, with the U.S. time zones. So it's going to be a big kind of a challenge for me to create a daily vlog while I'm there. And you might think to yourself, Michael, you seem like a crazy person to do this. And I would agree. It is. It's kind of a crazy yeah, thing to do. I, Michael does really good at at vlogs. So what you're going to see is the very moment he wakes up, he's going to brush his teeth on the vlog. He's going to do his mouthwash, his hair so routine. You, he's, he's being ridiculous, people, because he's forgetting that when I'm at breakfast, I tell you exactly every ingredient and how it was put together yeah. in, in in the meal. You get to you get live your details life. details and details. Like in, Michael. It's <laughs> it's unbelievable. You're going to love the experience. Don't miss an opportunity to tune in to Michael's. It's going to be better than that, well, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Michael, I, right, I just want to say how proud I am of you. You know, hosting Aww. and moderating, oh, doing a vlog, doing a talk, you know, that that's a lot to take on. And I know you're going to nail it. And the talk's going to be awesome. And I'm just so proud of you. It's Thank you so much. I'm going to destroy your proudness by telling you that <laughs> when I said it's rewritten, that is a future tense. It will be rewritten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, you all might get an ad lib version, uh, a tribute to the a tribute to yeah. that talk. Yes. <laughs> all right. So we also have scale coming up. So just mark your calendars, March 14th through the 17th, 2024, Pasadena Convention Center. That's where you get to meet Michael, me, and Jill at Whoa. scale. So just where's mark that, that on your where, calendar. Where's that? So that's in Pasadena, California. Oh, Michael, okay. Gotcha. At gotcha. the Pasadena Convention Center. That mm -hmm. makes sense. The Southern California, California Linux California. Expo being in California makes a lot of sense. Yeah. In Pasadena. Yeah. <laughs> both Pasadenas. Well, that's it. A big thank you to each and every one of you for supporting us by watching or listening. However you do it, we love your faces. And you know that this show exists because of a few great people out there who choose to become patrons. And what those patron dollars do is help us continue to do this show every single week. And so Consider becoming a patron. Join us in Discord. Become part of the community. Send in feedback. All of these things help contribute to the show. And this episode specifically demonstrates that perfectly. If you can't give financially, but you can send in some emails, some content, some tips and tricks and things like that, you're helping make this show happen. So you can go to our website and send those in or hang out with the community, make the community a fantastic place and welcome new people so they feel welcome. Don't feel bad if they're using Windows for gaming or Linux for some things and all of that. Let's welcome everybody into the community. Go to tuxdigital.com slash discord and be like Jill. We should all try to be like Jill. That's I'll really our like goal Jill. in life. That <laughs> is be like that Jill. is what people should have like a mantra. Yeah. What would Jill Just, do? What That's would Jill do? Yeah. Aww. But so also as another thing that you would want to do, because in a, it, helping us by becoming a patron is a really beneficial thing. You help us pay for hosting servers and the services we have and our automation systems and all these things that make this possible to create all this content for you for free, by the way. And also, it's not just that. You get a ton of perks. You get to join us live to watch us create this show and all of the amazing content that is also in the unedited version. Well, if you're not a patron, you don't get to see everything because there are sometimes we have these side topics where we maybe kind of go off on a tangent, especially or Ryan. Michael messes up a lot. Very long-winded. 
And then there's <laughs> <It's very long-winded. laughs> if you think I'm long winded just listening to the edited version. Yeah, imagine exactly. the unedited Im- version. Imagine. You so imagine. <laughs> but also there's other perks like the unedited version is available if you're a patron as well. And there's an ad free version for patrons. And there's so many cool perks, including if you are a Discord user, you can join the tuxdigital.com slash Discord server and get access to the patron-only section of our server. So, tons of great perks. That's not all of them. There's a ton more. So, go to tuxdigital.com slash membership to sign up for that. And also, there are some really cool things that you can get on our store. We have swag like hoodies, hats, coasters, uh, all sorts of stuff. I don't even remember all of it. T-shirts, there's a thing I shouldn't remember. Stickers, tons of stuff. In fact, we are changing our platform for how we provide the swag. So there's going to be some changes in how we release things and what is available at any given time. So if you want to go to the store now, there's going to be some stuff that will not be moved over to the new platform. And there's going to be new stuff on the new platform as well. So it's a great time to get some swag. And there will also be some new perks coming in the store very soon, within like a week or so, give or take. Make sure to check out all the amazing shows here on Tux Digital. That's right. We have an entire network of shows to fill your entire week with geeky goodness. Get your enterprise knowledge growing with the Pseudo Show. Head to TuxDigital.com forward slash Pseudo Show to get all the awesome info. Everyone head to TuxDigital.com and subscribe to all our cool shows. And don't forget to leave a rating on your favorite app so others can discover the power of open source and keep those penguins marching and the full monte of Linux and open source awesome sauce. Before we close out the show, I just want everyone to remember how we started the show. To truly understand the end, you have to start at the beginning. Are you talking about how we started the show in general or this episode? With Jacob's feedback, which was best show around. That, yep, that's true. I you agree. all need to listen to Ryan. He the man. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> Everybody have a great <laughs> week. And remember that the journey itself is just as important as the destination. Thank you, Aww. Jacob. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. We love you. Jacob's the best. He the man. He See the you man next too. week, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>